Welcome everyone to Product One's technical web series and happy National Numeracy Day. It's only fitting that on this day we showcase what's new on MathCAD Prime 7.0. The first thing we're going to look at in this particular demonstration is the embedded MathCAD converter. Please note, you no longer need to install the legacy version of MathCAD, which is MathCAD 15, in order for you to use the converter to convert MathCAD 15 documents into MathCAD Prime 7.0. Before I start though, I would like to showcase that these are some of the MathCAD 15 documents which I currently have. I'm going to take just one of them and convert it. I just want to show you what happens. So if you are inside MathCAD, you obviously can initiate the converter. And when the converter comes up, you can choose to add any of the documents. So I'm just going to select this one by simply saying convert. It converts that particular document. It gives you all sorts of information in terms of what is happening. Are there any errors or whatever the case is. Now, remember that uh, Explorer window that I showed you, you will realize that immediately there, there's the converter, converted document. It does not delete the old document that used to be there. So I now can open this document inside MathCAD Prime and it takes all the calculation across. Yes, I might have certain annotations, which I think you know very well that you can clear those. Now, something's very special that is with this worksheet is that you've got a drop down list that was part of MathCAD Web Controls that was in MathCAD 15. You now have that capability inside MathCAD Prime. I will get to that in a second. So, as you can see, I can change all any of these variables. And of course, the answer does change as well. So immediately by making any of these selections here, the calculation also updates. So that simply means that you can reuse some of your legacy information inside MathCAD Prime 7.0. Now, the other item that I want to showcase is custom margins. Now, why custom margins is purely because you might have a, a document such as this and you want to modify the margins here. You might deem the spaces in between or on the sides uh, to be too big. So you can go into documentation and say margins and select custom margins. So you can, of course, select whatever values you like uh, to customize your margin. I'm just going to do something radical here as well. I'm just going to choose uh, two. And because the system identifies that, look, this needs to be greater than six. So it's not going to allow me to execute this until I come back maybe and modify that. And just like that, I've got my own custom margin. And when you go back to this, it states the last used custom margin. So that means I get to reuse it if I want to keep this standard. The other item that I want to showcase here is spell check. Now, spell check is important because in the past, uh, you would never be able to say uh, when you let's say you're typing a document, you're making certain errors because PDC was viewing MathCAD as a documentation and a calculation, uh, what you call software, but the spell check part of it came in later. As you can see there, it showcases that that is not the right term. So I can say, right, okay, that's fine. Of course, I can go back if, for an example, I want the system to show me the right spelling, I get to choose which one do I want. Now, the part of this as well, and the impressive bit is, if you can look here, maybe I'm, a, I'm an educator, I'm creating a document for our mathematics class. So I've got lesson one or written assessment in English, and I also have written assessment in Zulu, Ugusola, Ugupalwayo, Isifundo 1. So if I want to now retain this and reuse it again, I can say, you know what? This word here, to be honest with you, it's actually supposed to be part of the dictionary. So I can add this onto the dictionary. And just like that, I now have a Zulu language 
an English language paper. So this is brilliant for those educators that want to move into the direction of teaching people mathematics and science in their native languages. What I like about that is if I come back now and type uku khola, uku khola, so if I were to type that, you will realize the system identifies that that is now a word that is in the dictionary. So it's something small, but it has some serious uh, impact. So the other aspect that I want to showcase here is obviously hyperlinks. So now with hyperlinks, so let's say I'm having a, a document and I want to tell people that click here for our website or whatever the case is. So I can easily say create a link and I can now paste the URL for our website as product one to say this is our website so I will copy this URL here and paste it here and just like that and I can do the same thing maybe quickly for Twitter I will say maybe this is what I want to do so I'm gonna copy that for Twitter and maybe for references maybe there is a certain calculation that needs a certain element of of referencing I can easily say, how about I make this a reference? And just like that, there I've got areas where if I were to pick this, it opens up the product one website, which is this. The same applies with your Twitter or any documentation and so forth. So that's hyperlinks. So they are, um, uh, helpful indeed for areas such as that. So now what I want to showcase here is what we call combo boxes. So you've seen a little bit of it when I was utilizing that converted file um, using that drop down list. So now with combo boxes, we have a couple of things. So if you can look here, this is an old uh, market document, which I've showcased in the past, where I'm picking the I-beam, and then that selection gets to dictate the sizes of the cross section for this particular I-beam. Now, what I wanna do here is something slightly more unique, in a sense that I've got a couple of variables, which is obviously the force, the length of the beam, the position of the force, and probably maybe let's say the Young's modulus. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a matrix. I'm going to start with the Young's modulus and follow up with the weight, follow up with the length, and maybe finish this off with the position of the, the load. Now, immediately when I say evaluate this, I can come back into my inputs and say combo box. And this is what I currently have. So I can say maybe this is beam option or I can call it loading or whatever the case is. But then I can say beam one. Let's say maybe beam two. Let's make them to be three so that we've got a very nicer number. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the first ask is obviously the Young's modulus. So I'm going to specify the value for my Young's modulus. So I'm going to specify, let's say 120 and maybe 200 and the last one is 110. The second item here was obviously the, the load. So guess what I'm going to do? The load is in a uh, kilo newton. So here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to specify the loads. I'm just typing random values now. So the same applies with the length. The length is in meters, of course. So I'm going to say make the first one to be 10, 15, last one 30, or whatever the case is. And of course, I can move the entire thing aside. Of course, I can come back here and say edit because I was not finished with this. And let's say the unit is in meters. And guess what 
I'm going to do with this. So let's say maybe I make it five, eight, and let's say maybe seven. So just like that, I'm having now a series of variables in this. So in fact, I forgot to even choose or put in beam three here. So the system shows me that. Now, why is this significant? Because I can now evaluate currently what is the value for Young's modulus. I can evaluate what is the current value for my force. The same applies with my length and likewise the position of the load. Now, if I were to choose any of these beams, this is what I have. Maybe there's a reason for this. Maybe I've got a certain selection that I'm limited to in this aspect because the deflection fails when it's a certain condition. So maybe let's look at another condition. So this is pretty good when you're exploring a certain design. So of course, the variables changes, the answer do change, and ultimately the answer, and that is probably maybe the design that I will be stuck with. That is the power of combo boxes. Now, last but not least, APIs. Now, PDC MathKit does support now the use of APIs. And not only that, they offer very intuitive examples, which you can also download uh, to create a series of automations inside your MathKit worksheet. So case in point, I'm just going to show maybe one or two here. So let's say I have uh, something such as this. So I'm going to say, let's open up this particular API. I'm just going to minimize this. So here is to start MathCAD, is to show MathCAD. So I currently have, so I can say hide MathCAD or show it. I can activate a particular window and start working on it. So these APIs are extremely powerful, especially if you want to automate certain processes. So you can also, it's not limited to, to open and closing windows, but you can actually take and push the envelope to these levels. So for an example, I like this one for a beam analysis, whereby I'm having a dialog box that comes up. Then I can open up the sheet concern. So this is the deflection of the beam. And immediately you can see that this dialog box becomes uh, active. Bear in mind that the value here actually comes from this drop down list. I get to choose, of course, you can customize this API to have a significant number of, of units. So, but this is brilliant for organizations where they want to limit the input of worksheets. They want people to interact with, let's say a dashboard or whatever the case is. Now, immediately when you say calculate the values, they also move from that dialog box into this. So the use case of these are extremely vast. So you can deploy certain modes of working in your environment using MathKit Prime 7.0. That is it for this particular video. Please do not forget to subscribe, like the video, and don't forget to hit that notification button to see more videos such as this. Until next time, goodbye.